to look at putting this thing together. I'm going to start with the tracks. Um, as you can see, it's got two wheels, it's got an inner set and an outer set, and the inner set are hooked together with these little tabby things. So they're going to show, so we're going to make those go away. Um, there will be bits and pieces up here where I'm just going to speed up and go faster and stop and go slower. This is the first attempt to try and do some of this stuff. So right now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this set of wheels, cut them off, cut off the little tabs, and just sort of let it, sh let it, uh, um, you know, get, get that crap away so that it'll look cleaner when you put it together is what will happen right now. If I glue them in the way they are, you're going to see it through the back. Uh, and that's, that's just not acceptable. Um, I mean, yeah, I know it's gaming ministry in the but, you know, we're not going to do that. So we're going to spend some time cleaning up. Um, we'll get all these, so let's skip ahead of it. So now we're going to go ahead and kick ahead and go through putting all these wheels in. Um, and you know, just yes, we can see a glue here. Put a quick little dab in, and each one of these wheels together, put them all in. And now I do note that you, know, or I realized that as I was doing this um, later on, I missed the back half of the sprocket and the back half of the idler wheel which later on you'll see me go back and get but again this is doing the other wheel for the other set of wheels now one of the cool things about the bt7 is you can or not the bt7 but the su uh, 122 is uh it, it this really goes together pretty well it's, it's pretty easy um the, the track suspension and everything is really kind of simplistic but you know, for, for this kind of model it's really nice so now we're cleaning up the the tabs here. Um, it's got seams. I'm not a big fan of that, but you know, not a lot that you can do. So, so now let's look at the hull. So we're getting the bits and pieces for the sides. We've got our two wheel sets. They're all set. They're good to go. So now I'm gonna take apart the lower part of the hull, and as you can see, it comes in two pieces. And this is not bad. You know, the you're gonna have a seam down the middle. Who cares? Clean it up a little bit. Um, take care of the uh, the edges and the, the screw bits and whatever. Um, so go through, clean this stuff up, and then we'll start putting this this hull piece together. Uh, clean the top, clean up the bottom. Now the nice thing about the the top, um, or I'm sorry, but the bottom, but it, it all. It, it's got some details of steam. It looks okay, but again, you know, it's going to be, you're not going to look at the bottom of it that much. Um, so, I just sort of clean it up here, and then put it together. And it goes together really nice. Actually, it goes together pretty easily. Um, as well. And then we'll just, you know, do a little bit of dry fitting, just like, as you should. And then, and we'll just move on, and we'll just start assembling the, the whole, all pieces. So as we go ahead and do that, we'll just speed things up again, and we'll just zip along, and away we go. And they, they go together well. Uh, it doesn't take much. There's the the, uh, the top and bottom pretty much sync up fairly well. The, uh, this front plate piece goes on there. It goes on a little odd. There's a there's a little bit of a gap at the one end because of the the end of it's not entirely flat, but that's fine, that fills in the putty. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get the other piece for the other end, which goes together fairly easily, and that'll just drop in right there. Um, and that actually laid well, so the, the whole piece is made it up fine, and there wasn't an issue there. So now the next thing is the fuel tanks. So there's four of them, and these are the external fuel tanks, and uh, each one, it's kind of interesting, as being a little anal here, each one of these things had their own number, so I thought I needed to be specific and made up each specific one together. Um, as I got done, I found out, yeah, not really. <laughs> you know, the, the the A side, the B side are, are, there's pretty much four of each, so they go together fine. So then I find that out once I get again. You know, it, it doesn't do you poorly to make sure you made up the right ones or the right ones, but you know, if you do this kit, you'll find you don't have to. So made up the, th the 
A's to B's and you're good to go. Um, and then so you'll have four of those set them off to the side. And now we start looking at what we're going to do with the rest of this thing. And now we look at the case bit. And as you see, you can make one of two types. You can do the S SU85 and the SU122. Um, and they, the casement itself is, they're separate. So that's what makes it different. So hey, got a cool idea. What if we magnetize them? So that's what I decided to go with. Um, everything else on the kit's the same except for that piece. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got to do. Build the two casements and then magnetize them up. All right, so after a nice little transition, we got our pieces and parts together for the casement. You know, what you're going to see here is the instructions tell you there's an assembly detail for putting together the SU-85 casement and one for the SU-122. They're totally different. Um, as you look at the pieces and parts like here, you can see the casement right here. That's the, the casement for um, the SU-85. You know, we're cutting out the barrel right now. Um, the barrel comes in one and a half parts. You can see it's solid at the end. But it's a whole barrel about two thirds of the way down, and it's got another part to go under it. Which, eh, you know, so there's a seam. It's not that bad. Um, but each casement is different. It's unique, so it's an entire, entirely separate assembly. So, as you can see, the sprue is sort of half and half. You know, where my my left thumb is right now, that whole half is the SU85, which is what we're doing right now. Um, so we'll get those pieces together, we'll assemble them, we'll put it together. The, you know, we'll, we'll clean things up and then put it together. So what I'm going to do for the moment is I'm going to try and speed up and just slide through all this stuff so you can see it all happening. Um, and then we'll just take one step at a time. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at... Um, we're just putting the gun together now. Uh, putting together the, the, the 122's um, 46 millimeter gun. 45? 45? 45. 45 millimeter gun, um, which for the time, you know, late 30s, early 40s, late 30s was not bad, um, especially with the, the speed this thing. And I go ahead and put the front piece on the mantlet, um, and then you're gonna put a case or cover on the top, and it's gonna limit the the angle of travel for the for the gun, which is fine. Um, I think it's scale. Uh, I don't know enough to know for sure, but I do know that it does limit the, the travel. Um, and again, for bolt action, it doesn't have to be <laughs> you know, perfect, but you know, it looks good. Um, and it'll get painted up nice. Um, so there we've got the, the gun for the SU-85. Now, and it moves. It's cool. So now we're going to move on. We're going to go ahead and do the gun for the SU-122. This thing was a bit of a snut. Um, the top part of this case right here, um, you can see the top for the for the howitzer that this thing carries. Um, needed to clean it, and then I ended up having to go back and sand it and fill it because uh, they didn't go together perfect. They went together okay, um, but it wasn't perfect enough, so I had ended up having to fill it and sand it down a bit. Um, the front piece goes on fairly well. They all the the fit on the majority of this thing is really good. Um, that piece right there, I just showing with the sanding stick I have to go back to. Um, then you put the mounting to the mount to the mantlet, then you put the thing that there's a hinge so that your gun can go up and down. Um, I need to put more glue on this than what I did, because uh, it ended up coming off of me the first time I took it out, so um, I didn't quite glue it up tight enough. Then you go ahead and put your mantlet together, goes together in a couple of pieces, and that snaps in nice. Now, there's there's a gap right there at the top that we see when we're done. Um, I probably should just fill that in here. So now let's look at the hull. I go ahead and pull the hull out. Now this is, I'm going to check the fit here. So there's two plates to the hull. There's a, the top and then there's this back piece. And that back piece goes right there. And I'm not sure if there's going to be interference when I go to put this thing together. So let's look. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and dry fit it. And it's fine. Good. So I can just go ahead and glue that on and, and get that piece done. Um, and now with that, we're going to take a look at the casements. Uh, we're going to cut those things out and see how they fit. So there's 
one that's the 122 because you know see that big fat thing um, now we're going to look at the magnets and see where they're all going to go so they're going to drop in um, along the sides here and I'm just kind of looking and see roughly where I need to drop them in and right about there is where I want them I'm going to have to put them along the side of the casement right there and so I'm dropping a bit of CA pulling one of these magnets off gonna sit sort of on the side um, with these long round magnets here so I'm putting it right there and we're gonna let it sit. Now the cool thing is I'm gonna be somewhat intelligent about this and I'm gonna put one to the outside to just hold it in place. So put these two on the outside get them put in and see I, I just smacked another one to the outside to hold it. You can see it sitting on the outside of the casement there to hold it in place while the glue dries. Um, so you know hey I, I have a bit of a brain sometimes. So now that I have those there um, we're going to let that dry up and set up for a bit um, and now let's locate where they got to go so I'll put another one now that I know where that's where I'll put the magnets on the underside or, or on the top of the hall so make sure I've got the orientation right put the drop of glue um, and you know <laughs> I, I triple check the orientation of my magnets. The polar I, I have magnets, I have so many bloody magnets there are so many bloody models backwards. Um and I get get the bloody things just not sitting right. Um so double, triple, quadruple check and again I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just dropping a magnet on the inside so that while it dries, you know, it just holds it in place, which is you know sort of cheating, but hey it works. Um so we go ahead and let let those go and, and we'll try it. Now let's see if they work. Hey, look at that. They work. Man, just hold himself in and it sits just fine. Great. Um, so now let's do the other one. Again, the same thing. Uh, and actually, that was not the 122. That was the. Um, I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That was the 122. And the next one's the. Uh, and of course, now I can't tell because I'm not sitting there looking at it. But. Um, just go ahead and you're going to do the same thing, or I did the same thing, drop the magnets in, um, you make sure you pull up, you make sure your uh, poles are in the right direction, stick it in, and then the cheek, uh, drop it in the outside to hold it in place, and more glue, more magnets, you know, this kind of stuff, it, it, it kind of it's speaking for you know, it, it's obvious um, and, and I because they give you the options to do this uh, I thought it was kind of neat um, I'm not stuck you know, the, the, the kit itself is cheap you know, it's like 30 bucks um, it's 30 bucks but it's 30 bucks that's gaming miniature 30 bucks not like a dragon kit 30 bucks um, so I, I I'm not going to vent too much about quality for cost, uh, but I do want to go on point saying that, that really um, makes me a little bit grumpy. You know, I, I, can, I can pick up a 148 to me for less. So now we're going to move on to the other parts we have to do. So now I've got the, the, the casements magnetized. Let's look at the rest of it. There's there's the uh, 122, that piece goes on. Yeah, there we go. See? There's the 122. That goes in, piece goes in. Takes my hands to that piece goes there. All the other pieces and parts for the casements are different, so I can go ahead and fully assemble both of those safely, and we're going to do that. Alright, after a nice little transition, um, off to putting these things back together. So now I've got the magnets are done. Let's pull the pieces and parts out. Magnets are in there dry. Casements are partially assembled. Um, there's the 122. I haven't glued the, the gun in yet, but you know, so the magnets are ready. Um, I'm happy with that. Um, I like that. <laughs> uh, that goes in. That drops in well. Um, the the there's a little piece on the far side. You just have to make sure you lay in right. Um, 
I was a little bit off on getting that one magnet in for that piece. Um, it doesn't. It's okay. Um, again, partially because um, you know, it will sit once I get it clipped in. Um, but the one I really like, uh, the 122, yeah, that drops in nice. Um, I just love the look of the 122. It's just big speed. So now moving on, uh, let's finish these things. Um, we've got the rest of the assembly to do. So now that the really cool things done, I've got you know details. So we've got the uh, fuel tanks to put on um, and, and other detail parts to put on the on the rest of the hull. Put all the things together. So we're gonna get cranking in on that and just start knocking in on it. Um, and so now I'll go ahead. We'll pick up the casements. Uh, make sure we got the right one for the right casement. We got the right mantlet. Okay, so then start putting the parts together, get the glue, and then this is stuff that you, know, uh, you, you can see things happen. So we'll just start putting that together, and then it's going to start zipping through stuff here again. Alright, so um, now it's going to speed up a bit, actually a lot, because this is a whole bunch of G following instructions parts, and that's what we're doing. So we're just assembling, finding the right parts, putting it all together. Um, that's the kind of thing that you know, your modeler so you can follow instructions. Um, the the armor on this thing, the, the nice thing, it, this, this is kind of cool, so I'm going to take a minute to talk about the, the 122. The armor on this thing was freaking thick. It, it's not as heavy as the 152, um, but it was a beast, um, especially you know early war. Um, these things were just brutal, and this this is your precursor to your T-34s. Um, you know these these were just trying to get the big guns out there so that they could be used. Um, and uh, you know, <laughs> uh, the, there's just something you said about putting our, our freaking howitzer um, on top of a tank. Or on top of a tank tree and, and driving it around the countryside blowing things up. Um, the 152, which is which came later, was dropped on a on the chassis of a uh, um, KV-1, um, and that thing's just fugly, and, and I love it. I love it because it's fugly. Um, so now I'm putting these these. There's this little piece here, um, and I was ready to scream. That it's it's. I think it's a light. I think it's the headlight or a light. Um, and the bloody thing is is so fiddly. And I really didn't want to bother putting it on because it was that fiddly. It was just a pain. Um, so when you do it, you need to make a point to take the time to just be really careful and have have tweezers or something that'll hold it in place. Because I mean, my fat fingers will not would not hold it in spot. Um, and that's even using CA, so it'll set up quick. Um, if you use, if you're going to use uh, model cement, I mean, I, I, my hands off to you. But that thing was just a pain in the butt. Um, yeah, I got to go do it on this next one here. Um, and this is putting the hatch in, putting the top piece on the on the gun. And just seal on that, and that could be good. Yeah, yeah, and that's this is that fiddly piece again. For now, it's on the on the one twenty two's casement. It's like, oh my gosh! And you know, it's modeling, but really, it doesn't fit well. It, it this is not high fidelity modeling. The the they're they're nice. They're nice. But this is nothing like you know you'd get out of a dragon or a hobby bra or something like that. But it works. It's all right. Um, you're not going to be moving a dragon kid around on a game board either. So you know I keep saying the same thing. Um, that's fun. Um, now I just go ahead and clean up the clean up these other detail pieces and get them ready to get dropped in. 
time that that piece goes onto the side, and that's your um, one of your, your stowage bins. And that piece, that stowage bin piece, is the one that sort of makes the putting of your um, casement a little bit of a bear because it, it's angled, but it works. So I was looking at the box here just to make sure I had the the um, locations right for the for the fuel tanks. And I'll get to those in a bit. Um, so now I'll put the hull on, and that's good. And we'll move on. So now we've got it um, primed, and I wanted to prime it so I could get the base color down and paint up the tanks and stuff. So I did a light top coat, a dark undercoat. And then got everything put together here. And then you see there's the 285, just clips in. You see, I have to put it in an angle to give that piece right there to the left. Um, so that sets in nice. Uh, go ahead and take the 122 casement, that just drops in nice. Um, you can see the gap at the top there underneath my one thumb. Um, that's something I kind of, I, I think I'm going to go back and fix now that it's finished. Um, so this is what we've got. Um, I like this kit. I, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I've got a bunch of things I've whined a little bit about, um, but for the for what you have, I mean, it's it's tons better than Warlord stuff. Um, I wouldn't say it's better than you know model kits, but this sort of shoots the middle. I'd like to see this scale in others. But it's a good kit. Um, hope this helps, and I hope you liked it. Thank you very much.